Good day and welcome to Mission Control Houston, where a team of flight controllers is watching over the activities of the Expedition 29 crew aboard the International Space Station. Commander Mike Fossum and flight engineer Satoshi Furukawa of Japan and Sergei Volkov of Russia are continuing their activities of the day, which focus on research uh, aboard the International Space Station. Today's uh, team here in Mission Control is being led by Flight Director Derek Hosman uh, with Ricky Arnold, the astronaut in charge of uh, communicating by voice with the crew on board the space station. In addition to uh, working with uh, various pieces of experiment work today, the crew is uh, also uh, working on some uh, general house cleaning activities, uh, gathering trash uh, to be uh, stowed into the 42 Progress vehicle that's going to be undocking uh, from the uh, International Space Station uh, coming up uh, later in on October in uh, anticipation of the arrival of the next Progress spacecraft that is scheduled to launch on the 30th of October. Uh, that uh, undocking of Progress 42 is scheduled for uh, Saturday, October the 29th, and we'll uh, clear the Piers docking compartment for the arrival of the next uh, Progress resupply vehicle. In addition to today, the crew uh, work with Mission Control to do some preparations for uh, a bit of a combination uh, reboost and uh, debris avoidance maneuver. There's a small, about uh, four inch or 10 centimeter piece of uh, Russian rocket body that was launched in 1991 that is coming uh, a little bit too close to the International Space Station for comfort. There was a reboost activity planned for next week uh, to prepare for the arrival of the Progress 45 spacecraft. Uh, another uh, such maneuver is planned for the 19th or 20th of October. Uh, but because of the proximity of uh, the uh, debris and the uh, upcoming reboost maneuver, the team here in Mission Control Houston coordinated with the team in the uh, Moscow Control Center uh, to uh, conduct that reboost maneuver a little bit early uh, to uh, take care of two birds with one stone reboosting the space station partially to get ready for that upcoming progress arrival and also getting it out of the way of this uh, piece of debris that's being tracked. The Zvezda service module engines will be fired for about 2 minutes and 49 seconds today at 11.45 a.m. Central Time, and that'll uh, reboost the space station by uh, 4.7 kilometers or about 2.9 miles. Uh, putting it uh, to an increased altitude and getting ready for that upcoming uh, arrival of the Progress 45 spacecraft. Again, this is uh, part of a small piece of an old Russian rocket body that was launched in December of 1991. And uh, the team here on the ground uh, in, in Houston and in Moscow worked together to come together with this plan as the uh, tracking showed that it might come within the uh, close proximity of the space station. As mentioned, uh, though, research is, and, and of course, the, some of the preparations the crew is making on that are to uh, close the uh, shutters on the uh, exterior windows for the space station, and uh, the folks in Mission Control will be feathering the solar arrays to make sure they're in the proper position uh, for the firing of those Vista service module thrusters. Among the different uh, research facilities being worked on today uh, were the uh, combustion integrated rack, the uh, fluids integrated rack, and the commercial bioprocessing system. Uh, those various experiments continuing uh, the uh, almost 40 hours a week of research that's going on every week aboard the International Space Station as the uh, assembly sequence is completed and uh, the uh, full utilization of the space station is underway. We do have a video clip uh, that Mike Fossum set down early this morning of his work with the Fluids Integrated Rack, which looks at how fluids uh, behave in microgravity. Uh, we'll take a quick look at that clip now. I wanted to make sure you guys had video. Yes, we do, Mike. We're on downlink one. Outstanding. Well, I wanted to welcome everybody on board the International Space Station today. I have the uh, fluids integrated rack open right behind me. I'm going to dig in here and do a little bit of work uh, this morning. First is changing out a camera uh, and, and to give us a different view or a better view, and then I'll be changing out some samples so we can get this uh, rack up and running uh, in the uh, next few days. So uh, welcome aboard, and uh, glad to have you watching over my shoulder.
And so the fluids integrated rack is uh, one of the two powered racks that compose the fluids and combustion facility on the International Space Station. Uh, the uh, other rack is called the combustion integrated rack. Uh, this combined uh, set of uh, experiment platforms provides uh, opportunity to look at the unique challenges of working with uh, both fluids and flame or combustion in microgravity. The Fluids Integrated WAC, which we're looking at here, features a large user configurable volume for experiments, and it kind of resembles a uh, laboratory optics bench. The experiment can be built on the bench from different components, uh, and then uh, the data acquisition and control and sensor interfaces. There's also a laser and a white light sources and advanced imaging capabilities, power cooling, and other resources needed for a variety of different experiments. It's built to accommodate a wide range of experiments, uh, and it focuses on uh, the complex fluids, uh, interfacial phenomena, dynamics and instabilities of fluids, multi-phase flows, and changes in phase of fluids. The investigations in the system range from uh, fundamental research to technology development in support of uh, exploration missions for NASA.